Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at three different ways that we can share our images using Lightroom. The first way will be using the web gallery. Then we'll take a look at published services, and finally, we'll learn a quick way to just email our photos. So let's begin with this collection of images over in the web module. You'll notice underneath the layout style, we have different options, both for flash galleries as well as HTML galleries, and there are a number of different templates over here on the left hand side that ship with Lightroom, so you could start there. I've already chosen one of the templates, and I'm just going to start with this as my starting point while we look at some of the panels on the right-hand side. So the first panel we want to take a look at is the site info. You can see here where it says site title. That corresponds to the site title over there. So if I wanted to name this something like infrared, for example, we can go ahead and do that. As soon as I tap the tab key, we can see that it's updated right here in the preview area. Of course, you don't have to enter in information for each one of these. If I just tap the delete key and then tab, you can see it just removes that information. In this case, I'm going to tap the delete key once more and then tap tab again. If I wanted to enter in my contact name and information that would appear right down here, I can go ahead and do that. I'll type in Julianne Cost, and then down here where it says mail to, I'm going to put in my own email. And now when I tap the tab key, we can see that that's been updated with a link so that when I publish this, the viewer just needs to click the link in order to send me an email. In addition, I could add an identity plate up at the top. I simply enable that, and then I can either type in whatever I want by editing the identity plate and using the styled text, or we can use a graphical identity plate. For now, I'll just leave it set to this and click OK. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, you'll notice that we have a panel that's dedicated to all of the different colors, so we could go in and click on any of these swatches in order to modify them. We also have an appearance panel, and in this case, I'm just going to make a few modifications here. I'm going to increase the number of grids here, so instead of just having three across, now I have four. Obviously, we could expand that even further. I don't want to show the cell numbers on there, but I do like those photo borders. And then I can determine what size I want the image pages by simply increasing the size here, and I can also choose to add a little bit larger of a photo border. Now, when we go to the image info area, this is where I can add things like titles and captions, but of course I can also select from this list and create my own custom templates. Down below here, we've got all of our different output settings, so I can tell Lightroom exactly the quality that I want for my larger images. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and increase that up to 80. It also allows me to restrict the amount of metadata that I export with each image. In this case, I'm going to leave it to the copyright only. And if I wanted to, I could add a watermark and then determine the amount of sharpening that I want to have added for each one of the images. And this is really a great feature. This sharpening works the same here as it does in the other output modules in that because Lightroom knows how large the original is and then how large you're resizing the image down, it's going to apply the appropriate amount of sharpening, which for the example like this would be different for the thumbnail views versus the larger images. And finally, you would need to enter in your FTP information so that you could upload this gallery to your site. And you'll notice here that I can again make a preset for this by just selecting Edit and then entering in the information for the FTP file transfer. All right, if I want to preview this as it is, I can click to preview it in the browser, in which case Lightroom will render all of the thumbnails and larger images and then show that to me in my default browser. As you can see, when I click on an individual image, it's going to show me that image larger. It's got the title that it's taken from the image here, and it actually has a watermark embedded on top of it. Go ahead and move through to the next image and the next image, or we can return back to the gallery by clicking on the index. All right, let's return back to Lightroom. And just like the other modules, you'll notice that at this point I can create a saved web gallery. Of course, that saves all the settings, not only in the panel, but also the images that I have selected right now. So when I create this saved web gallery, 
and we call this my IR Web Gallery for Infrared. I can choose to put that inside my collection. And when I select Create, and we scroll down here to my collections, we can see here's my original collection of images, and here is the saved web gallery. And if at this point I was finished with the gallery, of course, all I need to do is either export it or upload it if I've included all those FTP settings. If I haven't and I want to manually manage my website, then I would simply click Export. Lightroom will ask me to save the gallery, and then it would give me all of the necessary files, including that index file that you would need to link to. All right, for now, I'll go ahead and click Cancel, but I do just want to point out one other thing. Underneath the layout style here, obviously, we talked about the HTML gallery. You can also choose a Flash gallery instead. And one of the nice things about the Flash gallery is that even though you have a lot of similar features between the HTML and the Flash gallery, if you go under the Appearance area, you'll notice that there's a Layout option, and I can choose to show just a slideshow if I prefer. So that's another way to get a slideshow out of Lightroom in order to post to your website. All right, one last thing under the layout style here, you'll notice that there's a button to find more galleries online. If we click on that, Lightroom will take us to the exchange site on adobe.com, and you'll notice over here that you can browse by category. We're actually browsing the web gallery right here, and this is where other third-party developers can host additional plugins. You'll notice some of them are free downloads and some of them are paid for downloads, so you can look there for additional templates. All right, excellent. Let's go back to Lightroom, and let's move to the library module so that we can take a look at our published services. Now, published services are another way that we can share our images online. And you'll notice that I can publish directly to my hard drive, or we can publish to these other online sharing sites. OK, now I have already created published services not only for my hard drive, but also for Behance as well as Facebook. Now, sites like Facebook as well as Behance, you'll notice that you need to authorize those accounts, which is actually quite easy. You just click to authorize on Facebook. It takes you over to that site, and then you authorize it there, and it would take you back to Lightroom. But then once you've authorized this, you then have a variety of different options that you can set up depending on the sharing site. So for example, Lightroom and Facebook would communicate with one another and determine how to set up the title and what to do when updating photos. But there are a lot of common options here. And in fact, you've probably seen most of these in the export module. So for example, do you want to rename your files when you post them? Are you going to include video files? What are the file settings as far as formats? For example, Facebook, you really don't have a choice. You're going to upload your JPEG files. But then you can determine determine, for example, how large each of the images will be when you upload them. We have options for output sharpening, also for metadata, and then finally for watermarking. So once you set up all these settings for your specific published service, you would want to go ahead and save that. So let's just take a look at maybe one specific example, and I'll go ahead and use Behance. I'm going to click on the work in progress here that I've set up, and you'll notice that I don't have any photos in this published collection yet. So let's go ahead and pick some images. I'll return back to my sharing online folder, and I want to publish this image right here as a work in progress on Behance. So I'll just drag it down into my published service. Now, of course, when we click on it, we can see that, and Lightroom tells me that I have a new photo to publish. If I want to publish this, I simply click the Publish button, and then I get the options for Behance. So in this case, it's telling me that the title is the name of the file, and that's fine. I don't want to change that. It also brings in any of my keywords and adds them as tags. And then I can post a comment to start the conversation. Because on Behance, I'm publishing this as a work in progress to see what other people think of this image. So in this case, I'm simply going to type in, what do you think of the new images that I'm capturing with my infrared camera? 
Now I can either make this visible to everyone or if I've got a limited group of people, if I've made a feedback circle on Behance, I can limit it to just that circle of friends. Then we'll go ahead and publish this. You can see that Lightroom is updating that published collection and as soon as it publishes that, you can see that this is now changed and it says publish photos, which is really convenient because what that means is that later, if I decide that I want to publish something else and I add a secondary image to this Behance published services, when I look at it now, Lightroom has kept track of my images. So here I've got the image that's published, but here's one that is new. And in fact, if I take this image and I move over to the develop module, because maybe I want to make a change to it. For example, I might want to go to the basic panel here and just add a little bit of fill light. When I do that and I go back to the library module, you'll see that it's changed yet again and now Lightroom's telling me that this is a modified photo and it's asking me basically if I want to republish it. So in this case, because I did make a larger tonal change, I might want to republish it. But you should also know that if you've just added maybe another keyword or something and you don't want to republish it, you can always right mouse click and then you can mark this as up to date so that you kind of override Lightroom and say, no, no, you don't need to republish it just because of that. And of course, if we scoot over to Behance, I'll just tab over there and we can actually see here in my work, here is that work in progress and there is the image that I just uploaded directly from Lightroom. Finally, let's return back to Lightroom one more time and I'll return back to that same collection of images this time what I want to do is I want to select these four images and I want to quickly email them. So underneath the file menu, I'm going to choose email photos or I can use the keyboard shortcut shift command M on Mac or shift control M on Windows. For now, let's go ahead and just email them to myself. And we can go ahead and add a subject, new infrared images. And you can see here that I'm using Outlook as my email program and Lightroom will automatically attach these files. Now it's going to use a preset here. So in this case, it's going to make them a medium size image. It's going to be 500 pixels on the long edge at medium quality, but I can choose from these other presets or I can actually go in and create my own preset if I want to. For now, I'm satisfied with the medium option. So now when I select send, Lightroom will go ahead and resize those images, launch my email program, create a new email, address it to me, fill in the subject, and also attach the images. Well, that wraps up three different ways that you can share your images from Lightroom. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me.